chocolate, nuts, potatoes. If you have ever eaten any of these, you will have also eaten oxalate. This is a plant-based substance common in many foods, including rhubarb, spinach, sweet potatoes, nuts, beans, tea, and soy products. Because of this, it forms a large component of Western diets. However, oxalate has no known positive effects on the human body. When ingested, some of the oxalates you eat will bind to important dietary nutrients, such as magnesium, iron and calcium. By binding to these other dietary components, oxalate limits these nutrients' bioavailability and usability in the body. This effectively makes oxalate an anti-nutrient because of its ability to reduce other nutritional components' availability. Not only that, but when these oxalates create an accumulation of salts, they can cause a painful issue called kidney stones. In fact, oxalate is the most common component of kidney stones, with approximately 75% of all kidney stones in US patients containing calcium oxalate. These stones arise from an excessive urinary excretion of oxalate, otherwise known as hyperoxaluria. Current prevention measures for this have suboptimal outcomes, and kidney stone recurrence can, in severe cases, lead to chronic kidney disease. Not only that, but oxalate can also cause complications in patients who have inflammatory bowel disease or short bowel syndrome. Treatments for this typically include drinking more water, reducing salt intake, consuming less animal protein, and reducing oxalate intake. However, due to challenges with dietary recommendations and the high prevalence of oxalate throughout foods, these methods have limited success. Therefore, avoiding oxalate altogether is much easier said than done. Instead, Dr. Qi Shan Li and his team at Captozyme have designed a novel approach that uses enzymes to break down and remove oxalate from the digestive tract. These enzymes target all stages of the digestive process throughout the gastrointestinal tract, degrading oxalate from the stomach to the large intestine. But they don't stop there. Captozyme's enzymes can also reduce the oxalate concentration in food before it's been eaten, tackling oxalate absorption at the first possible moment. By degrading oxalate in the food beforehand, this prevents it from binding to other nutritional components. This in turn restores the functions of previously disrupted nutritional components, ensuring their correct dietary use. Through this mechanism, Dr. Lee's team at Captozyme are saying see you oxalater to a harmful kidney stone causing component of Western diets. Looks like oxalate's time as an anti-nutrient, anti-hero could soon be at an end. Today I'm going to show you how to make this salad that is rich in iron. But what's special about this salad, it will help you absorb the iron from the greens in this salad. I loved this salad, my husband loved this salad, so if you're interested in seeing how I make it, stay tuned. First we're going to start with cutting up the greens. You can use whatever greens you like or have on hand. I just happen to have spring mix in my refrigerator that I was using for that day. And the thing is, is that you want to try and get as many greens in the bowl as possible. And that is why I take the time to slice up the greens as finely as pretty much possible. I like to use the greens that are triple washed, pre-washed, and that way I don't have to mess with it, especially if I'm busy and I don't have a lot of time to prepare. So all I have to do is just chop and put them in the bowl. But ultimately, if you are struggling with anemia or low iron, you want to eat as many greens as possible. But not only do you want to eat the greens, you want to absorb the nutrients in the greens and specifically in this case you want to absorb the iron that is in the greens that you're eating. So the best way to absorb iron is to eat it with foods that have vitamin C in it because vitamin C helps you to absorb iron. Next, I'm going to add tomatoes. You can use whatever you want. You don't have to use tomatoes. Tomato is just what I happen to have on hand. So I'm going to slice this tomato 
and add it to my salad. And by the way, this salad is for one person. And so I'm gonna slice it into cubes. You can use cherry tomatoes, you can do whatever you want. So I'm just gonna add the tomato to the center of the salad. And you can be creative and you can add whatever it is you want to your salad. Next, I'm going to add hemp seeds. I think this is about a half a tablespoon of hemp seeds, but you can use as many as you would like. You don't have to be chinchy on the amount of hemp seeds you eat. They're going to help you with your protein part of the salad. Also, they're gonna give you your omega fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids, so, and also some flavor to the salad. So eat as much as you want. So here is the source of vitamin C that we're gonna use. This is just a regular navel orange. It's nice and ripe and ready to go. The thing about oranges is that right now they're still in season and you can get them plentiful. So actually you can get uh, oranges all year round, but this time of year, December, January, February is the perfect time of the year to use uh, oranges in your salad because they taste the best in my opinion because they are in season so all you're gonna do to make the salad nice and pretty is separate all of the inside pieces of the orange and then you get you're gonna chop the orange in the desired consistency that you like um you can do really whatever you want you don't even have to chop um the orange like i'm chopping it Sometimes I will like just peel the orange and just slice the orange and have orange slices on the salad. But this gave the, the salad a nice sweet uh, flair, which I really liked for this particular salad. And as you all know, I also use lemon and I'm, I used lemon for dressing for this salad as well, but that's another way that you can get your vitamin C into the salad so that you can absorb the iron in the greens. So now all you're gonna do is just place the orange pieces on the salad, arrange them however you like, or you can just dump all of this stuff in the bowl. You don't even have to make it pretty. The reason that I like to make it pretty beca is because it makes it more appetizing and makes it uh, more enjoyable to eat, but you don't have to do it. You can just dump it all in the bowl and eat it however it lands, and <laughs> that would be the end of it. <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason. You don't have to make it pretty. So next, I'm going to add my favorite no salt seasoning Benson's Table Tasty. This is the Fiesta variety. It's my favorite one. But you can use whatever herbs and spices you want to use. Just pick some that you love and put it on your salad. So next I am going to add a lemon. That's the other vitamin C that I'm using. You do not have to use lemon. You can use one or the other. If you don't want to use oranges, you can use lemon. So all I'm doing is quartering this lemon and I'm going to squeeze it on the whole salad. Um, but first I'm gonna pick some of those seeds out so I don't crunch on them when I eat the salad. But you can use whatever you want. Um, you can use the lemon or you can even put grapefruit juice or pineapple juice. You can use whatever citrus juice you want to add some vitamin C. And there are other ways to get vitamin C in your salad. Malnutrition is a major global health problem. Poor diet has been linked to a range of chronic diseases and even deaths. Obesity has nearly tripled around the world in recent decades, while undernutrition remains a serious concern. So how can governments improve the nutrition and health of their people? Stable isotope techniques can help. They provide important data to determine nutrition trends and design better interventions. Isotopes are variations of elements that differ in mass. With specialized equipment, isotopes can be tracked in the body because of their different weight and provide precise information on the nutritional status of a person. 
deuterium, an isotope of hydrogen, can help measure the body's composition of fat mass and fat-free mass. This stable isotope can also provide an objective measurement of whether infants are being exclusively breastfed. Stable isotopes can also be used to determine the amount of vitamin A stored in the body and tell if important minerals like iron or zinc are being effectively absorbed and used. These techniques help to check if efforts to improve diet and physical activity in the population are actually working so that policymakers can plan better actions such as stricter controls on unhealthy ingredients or programs to enrich food with key vitamins and minerals.